In the last video, we defined what critical points were. In this video, we're going to talk about how to classify what those critical points are. To summarize what we learned in the last video, we determined that a critical point is wherever we have our first derivative, that slope, equal to zero. Now, this could be at a local maximum, at a local minimum, or sometimes neither at what we call a saddle point. In this video, we're going to talk about how to not only locate where the critical points are, but also how to determine whether it's a maximum, minimum, or a saddle point. To do this, we have a step-by-step -step process that I'm going to lay out for you. So for a function f of x, we can find and classify the critical points using this process. So first, we're going to determine the first derivative, f prime of x. Once we determine the first derivative, we're going to set it to be equal to zero and solve for those associated x values. Now we have the x value for the critical point, but that's not all there is to a coordinate. We also need to determine its vertical value, the f of x or y value. So that's going to be our next step. We're going to determine the associated f of x, that vertical value for that critical x value. At this point, you're going to have your critical point. You're going to have the full coordinate. So now we're going to get into classifying what that critical coordinate is. So then we're going to determine the second derivative, f double prime of x. Once we have f double prime of x, we're going to do what we call the second derivative test. This process involves taking what we did in step four and substituting our x values, the critical coordinates that we determined, those x values, into the second derivative formula to determine the second derivative for those specific coordinates. So once we have the second derivative value for the critical point, we can then determine if it's a maximum. Now, if f double prime of x is negative, it's, if it's less than zero, we're going to have a maximum. As we talked about in lecture three, if the slope is continuing to decrease, if the second derivative is less than zero, then what we have is a concave shape, concave down. And then we know that that critical point right here is going to be a maximum. We determine that it's going to be a maximum. Now, if f double prime of x, that second derivative, is greater than zero, that means that the slope is decreasing over the range. It means that we're going to have this shape right here. It's going to be concave up. We have our first derivative increasing. It's getting more and more positive. Our second derivative is therefore positive. We have concave up. So what is that going to mean? It means our critical point was sitting right here. That's where the slope is zero. So we would be dealing with a minimum, a minimum. Now there's one more possibility. Sometimes our second derivative is going to be equal to, to zero or alternatively, there is no value for it. It's inconclusive. In this case, we don't know what's happening. It could be a saddle point. It could be a maximum. It could be a minimum. So we're going to have to investigate further to determine what that critical point is. In this situation, we have a sixth step. So if we have an inconclusive second derivative test, that was step five, then we have to do a first derivative test. If that second derivative test is inconclusive, then we do a first derivative test. And in this case, we're going to calculate f double prime of x on either side of the critical x value. So we'll take a value of x slightly smaller than our critical x value and slightly larger than our critical x value. And we can then determine what the slope looks like on either side of the critical value. So what we can see in a situation like this is that in values slightly below our critical x value, we have a negative slope. Here above our critical x value, we might have a positive slope, thus indicating that we're dealing with a minimum. Alternatively, it could look like this, where we start with a slope that's positive and we have a slope that's negative. So for values lower than our critical x value, we have a positive slope. 
for values above our critical x value, we have a negative slope. In this case, we would be dealing with a local maximum. The most common situations are saddle points. So in saddle points, we would have a slope that's negative for values below our critical x value and a slope that's negative for values above our critical x value, thus indicating that this is neither a maximum nor a minimum, it's just a saddle point. We might have a saddle point going the other way for our function flowing in the other direction upwards, so we would have positive slope and positive slope. Now we only do step six if step five is inconclusive, only if it is inconclusive. I guess I should have drawn the arrow there. Only if it is inconclusive. Otherwise, we skip step six altogether. So to summarize, if our second derivative test is less than zero, then we're going to be dealing with a maximum. If our second derivative test is positive above zero, we're going to be dealing with a minimum. If our second derivative test gives us a value of zero or alternatively does not exist, then we don't know if it's a max, min, or saddle point, and we have to go to step six to be able to determine if it is indeed a minimum, maximum, or a saddle point. What is the characteristic for that critical point? Now that's a lot to take in. It's going to make a lot more sense as we do some examples, and I have three examples lined up for us.